There is no generation that speaks the Ainu language. This is the biggest crime committed by the Japanese government. In 2019, behind a locked laboratory door at the University of Tokyo, a single skeleton shattered a nation's origin story. The remains came from Hokkaido, an Ainu burial ground sealed off for decades, forbidden to geneticists. But one scientist, Dr. Hiroshi Tanaka, sequenced it anyway. What he found wasn't a trace of Japan's modern people. It was something far older, a genome untouched for 40,000 years. The so-called barbarians, once written out of textbooks, turned out to be the true descendants of Japan's first humans. The revelation spread quietly at first, until the government tried to suppress it. Because if the Ainu were Japan's original people, what did that make everyone else? And why had the country spent a century trying to erase its oldest bloodline? Japan calls itself a land of one people, a nation bound by a single bloodline, stretching back to myth. For generations, that story shaped everything. The emperor's divine ancestry, school books claiming ethnic harmony, even the idea that the Japanese archipelago was always one continuous civilization. But genetics tells a very different tale. Recent studies, Nature 2021, Science Advances 2023, prove Japan's people were forged from three ancient worlds. The Jomon hunter-gatherers, who settled here 14,000 years ago. The Yayoi farmers, who arrived from the Korean peninsula 2,800 years ago. And the Kofun elites, who rose 1,500 years ago, to create the empire we know today. Yet one group, the Ainu, stand apart. Their DNA still carries the signal of that first migration, unbroken for tens of millennia. Their story isn't just about survival, it's about what Japan tried to forget. Because beneath modern cities and rice fields lies another Japan, older, colder, and far more diverse than anyone was allowed to believe. You're watching Root and Relic, where we uncover the hidden history written in our DNA. Subscribe now, because this discovery didn't just rewrite science. It forced a nation to confront the truth buried in its own blood. When Japan entered the Meiji era in 1868, it raced to modernize. New railways, Western uniforms, and a new national myth built around unity. But in this new identity, there was no room for the Ainu. By 1899, the Hokkaido Former Aborigine Protection Act declared them wards of the state. It sounded benevolent. It wasn't. It stripped them of their land, their language, and their dignity. 90% of Ainu territory was seized for settlers. Entire villages were moved off ancestral rivers. Tattoos that once marked womanhood were outlawed. Bear spirit ceremonies banned. Children were forced into Japanese schools, renamed and punished for speaking their mother tongue. Official textbooks began calling them extinct. By 1930, half their population was gone. Victims of disease, starvation, and forced assimilation. Yet their silence wasn't consent. In hidden valleys and northern fishing towns, elders whispered stories of the time before rice, before emperors, before erasure. A time when the Ainu were not an exception to Japan, but its origin. And to find that origin, we have to go back. Thousands of years before history began to be rewritten. Long before the first rice seed touched Japanese soil, a different people ruled these islands. They were the Jomon, hunter-gatherers who arrived around 14,000 BC as Ice Age glaciers retreated. Unlike the nomads of Eurasia, the Jomon built villages, fired pottery, and carved masks from clay. They fished, foraged, and honored nature with ceremonies older than any written prayer. Archaeologists have unearthed thousands of sites. Sanai Maruyama in northern Honshu, the shell mounds of Hokkaido, each filled with tools, bones, and fragments of an unbroken civilization that thrived for nearly 10,000 years. Their DNA carried haplogroup D, 1B, 1A, 2A, P, 37.1. One of Asia's oldest paternal lineages. They also had mitochondrial haplogroups M7A and N9B1, rare almost everywhere else, but common among the Ainu today. 
According to geneticists, these lineages diverged from the rest of East Asia about 40,000 years ago, the same split seen in Tibetans and the Andaman Islanders. It means the Ainu are not newcomers from the north, as old propaganda claimed, but living descendants of those first island settlers. Their blood is a time capsule from humanity's earliest eastward expansion. But if the Jomen were Japan's first people, what happened to them? How did their genetic map get buried beneath another civilization's story? To answer that, we have to meet the newcomers who rewrote the islands, one harvest at a time. Around 300 BC, ships began arriving from the Korean peninsula, small wooden vessels carrying a people who would quietly change everything. They were the Yayoi, and they brought two weapons far more powerful than bronze or iron, rice and population. Wet rice agriculture could feed 10 times as many people per square mile as hunting and gathering. Within just six centuries, that mathematical advantage rewrote Japan's genetic map. Villages of Jomon fishers and foragers were slowly surrounded, absorbed, or displaced by Yayoi farmers who multiplied in number with every harvest. Genetic studies tell the same story. The Yayoi carried Y chromosome haplogroup O, dominant in China and Korea, and today, it makes up over 51% of modern Japanese male lineages. The ancient Jomon D haplogroup, once spread across the islands, now survives mainly in Hokkaido among the Ainu, where it still reaches 87% of men. Maps of Japan's genetic gradient show a clear pattern. The farther north you go, the more Jomon blood you find. In Kyushu and western Honshu, closest to Korea, Yayoi ancestry exceeds 60%. In northern Honshu, it drops to 40%. By the time you reach Hokkaido, it falls below 10%. The Yayoi didn't conquer by sword. They conquered by fertility, by farming, by patience. Their arrival brought metal tools, woven silk, and new diseases. But it also brought something subtler, a hierarchy. Those who farmed were civilized. Those who fished were not. In that distinction lay the first seeds of a myth that would define Japan for the next 2,000 years. The idea that only one kind of blood was worthy to rule. By 250 AD, Japan had entered the Kofun period, an age of kings, tombs, and unification. Massive earthen mounds rose across the plains of Nara, shaped like keys seen from the sky. Beneath them lay the remains of a new ruling elite, the Yamato, forged from the merging of Yayoi farmers and the last Jomon survivors. It was here that Japan's modern identity began. Genetic analysis of Kofun-era burials shows a hybrid profile. 75% Yayoi, 25% Jomon, a fusion that produced the ancestors of today's mainland Japanese. Haplogroups C1A and G1B appeared for the first time, evidence of intermarriage and migration within the islands. But the unification wasn't peaceful. As the Yamato extended their power, Jomon descended groups were driven to the peripheries, into the northern forests of Tohoku, and across the strait into Hokkaido. In temples and chronicles, they were rebranded as Emishi, barbarians, and later Ainu. It was during this period that myth became law. The Kojiki and Nihon Shoki, Japan's earliest chronicles, described emperors descending from the gods, weaving the divine right of rule directly into blood. For the first time, race and legitimacy became intertwined. By the 7th century, the Yamato kingdom stretched across most of the main islands. Jomon ancestry had been diluted to a trace, just 12% in Tokyo, 9% in Kyoto, but north of the Tsuguru Strait, something extraordinary had survived. The Ainu had become an island apart a living time capsule of the first Japanese genome, protected by isolation and the cold. For centuries, the Ainu lived on the margins of Japan, trading furs and fish, rarely seen, rarely counted. But their DNA never forgot. When modern geneticists finally sequenced Ainu samples in the 21st century, what they found stunned even them. Nearly 87% of Ainu men carried haplogroup D1b, the same lineage found in Jamon remains dating back over 16,000 years. Their maternal lines told the same story. Mitochondrial haplogroups, N9B1, 
and M7A, they appeared in over a third of Ainu women, but were almost absent elsewhere in East Asia. This wasn't a remnant of migration. It was continuity on a scale rarely seen in human history. In 2024, researchers at Tohoku University used AI modeling to reconstruct ancient genome flows across Japan. Their results confirmed it. The Ainu represent a direct genetic line from the first wave of humans who entered Japan nearly 40,000 years ago. Every strand of D1B was a fossil written in flesh. Even their physiology bore ancient clues. Ainu lack the IDAR mutation common in East Asians, a gene responsible for straight hair and shovel-shaped teeth. Instead, they retain older variants linked to thicker body hair and lighter skin, traits once essential for cold survival. Their FADS gene adaptations, optimized for marine omega-3 metabolism, tell of a people who lived on salmon, seals, and seaweed long before rice existed. It's proof that culture and DNA evolved together, hunter-gatherer genes, supporting a hunter-gatherer life. If DNA could speak, what would it say about where you come from? Tell me in the comments. Because in the Ainu's case, their genome has spoken for 40,000 years without ever being heard. The Ainu didn't just inherit ancient genes, they carried an ancient voice. Their language is a mystery to linguists. A true isolate, unrelated to Japanese, Korean, or any other known family. It has no written script, yet it encodes an entire worldview in rhythm and sound. Every word carries nature's imprint. There are more than 20 words for snow, 10 for bear, and unique verbs for the way rivers bend, or the way salmon return upstream. It's a world where words breathe, not just describe. The language is agglutinative, built by stacking morphemes like stones, allowing a single word to express complex emotion or entire events. Linguists using glottochronology estimate Ainu's separation from other tongues around 13,000 years ago, aligning precisely with the late Jomon period. It means this language, like their DNA, diverged in isolation for millennia, and within it lies a philosophy. Humans are not masters of nature, but participants in it. Every mountain, animal, and river has a soul, Kamui, and the Ainu's ancient chants sung to these spirits are living fossils of a pre-agricultural world. But by the 20th century, their songs faded to near silence. Only a handful of fluent speakers remained, most elderly, their knowledge passed by whisper. One Ainu elder once said, our words live in the forest. If the forest dies, the words will too. Today, linguists and Ainu youth work together to preserve what's left, recording, reviving, and teaching. A language that evolved beside mammoths and glaciers now survives on smartphones and classrooms, proving that even silence can be temporary if someone chooses to listen. When Japan entered the modern age, the Ainu were not just marginalized, they were scientifically erased. During the late 19th and early 20th centuries, anthropologists collected Ainu skulls, bones, and even teeth, often without consent. By 2018, over 1,600 Ainu skeletons were found locked away in Japanese university basements, including 1,500 at Hokkaido University alone. To the descendants of those taken, they weren't specimens, they were grandparents. The state suppression wasn't limited to grave robbing. By the early 1900s, Ainu children were banned from speaking their language. Schools taught them to hide their ancestry. Government documents labeled them former Aborigines, as if they no longer existed. The goal was complete assimilation. And by mid-century, Japan declared it achieved. But DNA kept their story alive. Genetic markers persisted long after policy tried to erase them. Studies in 2012 revealed that over 36,000 people in Hokkaido carry identifiable Ainu ancestry, far more than the 25,000 who officially identify as such. Entire families unknowingly carried the signature of a people Japan tried to forget. 
In 2019, the Japanese parliament finally passed the Ainu Recognition Act, granting them status as an indigenous people. Yet many Ainu activists saw it as symbolic, a gesture without restitution or land rights. Even the opening of the Upapoi National Ainu Museum in 2020 drew criticism, a state-run monument celebrating a culture it once buried. Still, something had shifted. For the first time, Japanese scientists were allowed to sequence ancient Ainu remains. In sterile labs, researchers began to uncover what politics had long denied, that the Ainu genome wasn't a relic of extinction, but a map of survival. Through science, the silenced began to speak again. Today, Japan's streets and subways are filled with faces whose ancestry runs deeper than they know. Consumer DNA tests have started revealing the truth. Tens of thousands of Japanese citizens carry Jomon and Ainu heritage. Some share 2 to 10 percent Ainu ancestry, enough to trace their line back thousands of years. Online, communities like Hidden Ainu Japan are forming, young people discovering that their grandparents' northern roots were never just a family myth. Artists are reintroducing Ainu textile patterns into modern fashion. Musicians remix ancient Tonkori songs into electronic beats. In classrooms, children once taught to forget, now learn Ainu words their ancestors whispered in secret. Modern surveys show that while only 25,000 people openly identify as Ainu, genetic data suggests the true number may exceed 10 times that when mixed ancestry is considered. In other words, Ainu blood flows quietly in the veins of modern Japan, reminding the nation that its story was never one race, one people, or one past. The Ainu are not extinct. They're evolving, adapting, remembering. Every reclaimed song, Every translated myth, every repatriated skeleton brings them back into the story that was stolen from them. And in that rediscovery lies something bigger than one people's struggle. It's the realization that history cannot truly be erased. It can only be buried for a while. Until DNA remembers. In the end, the Ainu story isn't about extinction. It's about endurance. For 40,000 years, their DNA survived ice ages, invasions, and assimilation. It crossed epics silently, waiting for someone to listen. And when science finally did, the truth emerged, not in monuments or myths, but in genomes. The Ainu are living proof that a nation's roots can be older than its memory. Their haplogroup D1b still pulses through veins that once carried obsidian tools, bear ceremonies, and the songs of the Jomon. Their language, once silenced, now echoes again in classrooms. Their faces, once hidden, are reappearing in art, film, and pride. Because identity doesn't vanish when it's denied. It hides and waits to be found. The DNA that Japan tried to bury became the very evidence that rewrote its history. So when you hear that Japan is a land of one blood, remember this. Beneath its cities and rice fields lies a genome that refuses to die, a story older than any empire. If this journey through time moved you, subscribe to Root and Relic, where we uncover the truths buried in bone and blood, the forgotten chapters of humanity's DNA. And tell me in the comments, if you discovered that your own ancestry wasn't what you were taught, would you want to know? Because sometimes, the past isn't gone. It's simply waiting in us to be remembered.